Ah, the quiet life of wormhole living. Just making esque by yourself, no one around to bother you. What's the worst that could happen? What's happening guys? So this is going to be a continuation on wormhole tips, but most importantly this video is designed around nomadic wormhole life. What does it take? What do you, should you expect living in a wormhole by yourself or in a small group? Getting started, it was actually pretty time consuming. I spent about 36 hours um, hunting for a wormhole of my very own and I found one with a citadel but I had two member corp and they were not active anymore in that particular hole. I think they just left the citadel. So I set up in that, it had no effects, had a C2 static for farming and a low sec connection static uh, for the ease of use for Empire. That's exactly what I was looking for because eventually if things went well, I wanted to take some corp mates in and teach them the ropes. Um, that's the great thing about a C2, you can average anywhere from 80 to 150 mil an hour depending on your skills plus what ship type you're using. Um, you know, when all the stars align, that's exactly how much you can make somewhere in that range. Uh, what I didn't know is just how rare it is you get those opportunities. What do you do in your own wormhole? Well, nothing much. You'll mine and then you'll save the sites, not run them. Other than mining, you're gonna wanna save everything and not run it yourself and it's for content. In the background here you'll see that I'm hunting people in my wormhole at the time and it's because I set up perches and all the data sites and the whole purpose I did this is if I'm not very active that day or I have nothing to do I could just simply check d-scan as I walk by the computer if I know someone's around they have no idea I'm there I can go and blow them up and get myself a free possible sisters core scan probe launcher in the long run you actually make more money it's more lucrative and it's a bit more fun to blow people up. You also want to save them because there will be many days that you can't do much, especially if you're a small party, which is unfortunate, which was kind of like the deal breaker for me on this. It was uh, a lot of consecutive days I could not play, and I spent most of my time just camping my own wormhole. And that is because I didn't have hold control. What is hold control? Well, hold control is you have control of your own hole, meaning that you have closed the statics and there's no other connections into your wormhole and you're opening up the static during the times that you want and farming it or rolling it to a new one. Now there's some fundamental things about wormholes that I have to review because this is something I actually learned during this process. Okay, so the fundamentals. What you're looking at here is uh, just an example of what wormholes kind of look like on paper. Obviously these little boxes are individual wormholes and these will be moving and rotating and they'll be all different ones. We're just taking a snapshot in, in time what it would look like at this exact moment as an example. This is what your, your stack connections will look like. Now there is a procedure all on its own of what you need to do before you get started with your day. Um, we're going to fast, we're going to skip over that for now and just talk about the mechanics. Uh, before you get started, you might want to run some things in and out in, from Empire, and this low sec connection could be uh, Tama, which actually happened to me once. <laughs> That's not one that you want to leave open. <laughs> so you'll roll that hole and close it. Now a new signature will spawn. You don't warp to that, but you just document it. Uh, I'll just make a note. Hey, uh, BYX is the low sec static, and I'll scan it down, I'll save it, but I won't warp to it. That remains closed. The connection will not be available. There'll be no connections to your static until you warp to it. Then it makes a new connection. So in this example, we closed our low sec connection, and then we closed the existing C2 connection. Now we've warped to the signature of the new C2. At this point, we'll go in, do our research, see if that's the place we want to farm. And that's pretty much the procedure. You'll just continue to roll these holes until you find one that you feel comfortable about doing. More on identifying which ones you wanna do later. But this is just the mechanics of what you're doing. So right now you are closing. You have control of opening and closing these doors. This is what's referred to hole control. And when you have hole control, life is good. 
when you don't, life is bad. <laughs> so anomalies, data sites, relics, all those things, even wormholes, will randomly spawn in your system. That's why you have to know what all the signatures are. Uh, most people use software to help them track, like Siggy and Tripwire. I use Notepad. Yes, Notepad. <laughs> you know, it's just me, so I just document the signatures in there and what they were. And then I would cross-reference that every time I'd log in. So on this day, I noticed, hey, two new wormholes I have connected to mine. So I checked them out. The C5 was a frigate hole. You cannot close a frigate hole by yourself. Uh, as far as online, I couldn't find any procedure other than something a couple years ago that worked temporarily. Uh, I found no legitimate way to close a frigate hole. So if you know of any procedure, I would really appreciate you sharing that with me so I can update that in the notes. But as far as I understand, because they regenerate, uh, at least for the scope of us, one man or a small gang, you can't close that wormhole. So you don't have control. Uh, the C3 was a medium sized, meaning that you had to use something like a cruiser size. A, a retriever actually comes in uh, at the highest mass for the, like that's the recommended ship to close. But unfortunately you have to jump back and forth with one character 20 times. And but with the polarization timer, that amount of exposure, it's way too dangerous. So I wasn't up for that. So in this case, I don't have hole control. If I close my low sec in C2, anybody comes in from the C5 and C3, scans my wormhole, which they will, they'll warp to those other wormholes and open the connections. So you've lost hole control. You really can't do much because if you're farming that C2 and someone comes up behind you, now if you warp back into home, you can get caught. So at this point, you reserve that for camping your data sites. That's what I did. So the next day I'd log in and different holes would be connected to mine that were you know, medium sized that was out of my control. So for five consecutive days, I did not have hole control, meaning that I did not go and do data sites, or uh, I'm sorry, combat sites in my static because it was too dangerous because there's too many doors that uh, I couldn't watch and control. And that's just the way it goes. I'm, I'm telling you this because if you're going to go into this thinking that you'll consistently make 80 to 150 million an hour, depending on ship type and your skills, while you can make those numbers, um, you divide five days of no playtime into the mix. It's not so lucrative now, but uh, that doesn't mean it's not rewarding or fun. You just want to make sure you have some sort of backup plan. When this happens, because it's going to, what are you going to do with your time? Be it do something on another character, camp, look for PvP, whatever it is. Just, you're going to need a plan in place because this is going to happen often. Okay, the boring mechanic stuff is out of the way. Now we're going to talk about rolling your own wormhole. This is for your statics, and this is for large wormholes that you would use a battleship for. So the art of closing your own wormhole. Keep in mind, this is going to be one of your most vulnerable uh, spots when you do this um, it just crap happens and I've closed about 50 so far and I've lost one rolling battleship as you can see in the background which is not bad not a bad trade-off and uh, actually I kind of suspected that was gonna happen and uh, I would have made it but it was the hole was on end of life and the damn thing despawned when I jumped through from end of life and not because of mass. I could have burned back to the hole and it would have closed. And I knew there'd be someone on the other side of that hole. <laughs> and it was just luck, man. That's all there is to it. <laughs> so when choosing the ship for rolling, you're going to want a battleship. However, not every battleship can do wormhole rolling. It's important that the battleship must be under 100k mass before a Higgs rig is placed on there provided that it's under 100 uh, 100k mass before the Higgs rig you are in good shape so as an example uh, you can use a Megathron but you can't use a Dominix which is just terrible because I'd love to use the Dominix to roll it I mean it's disco potato man so anyway I use a, a Megathron and a Tempest with my two alts uh, I find that the Tempest seems to be the best because when you have a Higgs rig on there it makes the ship super slow uh, with the Tempest being the fastest of the choices, I get about 150 MS burning slowly back to the hole when you jump through. 
Now I would link you some fits to show you how to fit it, but you know how it goes because people are gonna be like, you should fit it this way. I like mine pink, I ain't going through that. So you just Google that part. You can do that on your own. So those are the two ships I'm using. To roll a wormhole, one battleship's gonna take you about 16 minutes. Two battleships in my case takes me about eight minutes to roll a hull, which isn't too bad. And of course, the more numbers you have, the easier it is. You're also gonna want yourself a heavy interdictor um, for those 10% variances. I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna go through the procedure now. So how do you close a wormhole with two battleships, you and your buddy? Well, the, you, to close a new hole, giggity, uh, with two battleships, the goal to close a wormhole is you gotta hit 20K mass. Now, I need to explain some acronyms that are thrown around so you understand, especially when reading, you'll wonder what these terms mean. When someone refers to jumping in cold, that means the prop mod isn't on, like the micro warp drive. And then jumping hot means that it's on. When you jump cold, that's 200k mass. When you jump hot, that's 300k mass. So basically on a new hole, what you'll do is you'll jump both battleships in cold and then jump them back out hot. You'll then warp to your safe or citadel and wait for three minutes for polarization. Uh, once you jump out, the hole will either shrink or not, and that determines what you're gonna do next. If it shrank, you'll warp back to the wormhole and jump in cold with both battleships, and then jump out hot, and it should be closed. If uh, the hole didn't shrink, you'll jump in hot both ways, and you're good to go. And in, in the event that this didn't occur, this is where the uh, heavy interdictor cruiser comes in. All you have to do is fit four bubbles on that thing, uh, launch them all up, and this uh, makes the mass of your ship about the size of like a pod to frigate range. So when you jump through, it's so little mass, it's very little risk of the hole collapsing. And then when you burn back with the prop mod on, it's about 65k mass, enough to, to take care of that 10% variance, and then you're good to go. Uh, I found of uh, like the 50 holes that I closed, I only needed to use this twice. I typically use it on holes that had been open a while if I've been gone or a day or two. So it's definitely something you want to have on hand if you're going to be in here in a small group. And by the way, if you uh, Google like wormhole static rolling chart, uh, I think EV University and a couple other corporations have charts. Like they're really nice. Uh, that kind of guides to go over this. So you can print it out and kind of have like a little cheat sheet next to you. That's what I have. A little pro tip here that I had learned the hard way. When you're scanning down a wormhole, do not bookmark the 100% completed signature. Warp to the wormhole and then bookmark the hole itself. When I warped this dictor in, I was like 6km off. If I had bookmarked the wormhole itself, I would have landed at zero. So that's, that's important. Now that we've covered the mechanics of wormhole space, along with how to close holes and also hole control so you can do industrial activities privately, like mine and PI, now we're going to focus on doing the combat and PVE content and the proper research on what you need to do before you start your day. So in wormhole life, you'll start your day by logging on and identifying any new signatures. You'll then scan down those signatures and make sure none of them are threats. They'll bookmark your data sites, make purchase if necessary. Uh, as long as there's no new wormholes that had spawned, you're in good shape. Now at this point, you can continue farming the existing wormhole that you had, the C2 that you did yesterday, or you may uh, open up the connection and do the proper research. All right, if you can take anything from this video, I think this last segment is the most important and it's what you must do. This is, doesn't just apply to living in a wormhole, but if you're in coming in from low sec or some other source and you want to farm the content in a wormhole, this is what you absolutely should do. If you do this, you're, it, it will determine whether you're going to make it disc or lose it. And trust me, after I've I put a lot of time and money in, in this whole wormhole thing and, and in the past I've lost a lot and what I'm about to show you is going to increase your chance of success greatly and it's just the dedication you must put in if you want to safely do a wormhole. If you just opened up a C2 connection or you're just coming into the wormhole for the first time, my advice is be quick. 
you want to warp around the system as fast as possible, cloaked, and hitting D scan to see if any ships are active. The reason you do this is often enough people aren't paying attention if a new signature spawn and you can grab somebody, a target of opportunity. I've gotten mining fleets and stuff that way. Uh, additionally, if they have a scout or something on a low sec connection, you come through the low sec and they were AFK getting a drink or something or just finishing up a combat site and they're burning back to their mobile depot, you may have a window of opportunity. So always be quick as far as when your initial response when you come into a wormhole for that target of opportunity. After you determine no one's active or there's no one you can grab, the next step you want to do is look up, uh, I like to use Eve Pasta. I like Eve Pasta because it's quick. Uh, you type in the wormhole name and it will tell you first what class wormhole you're in. Uh, so in this case, my system was a C2 and it has a low sec static and a C2 static. So I know that there's at least two other connections to this wormhole. Uh, it'll also tell you if the system's occupied or contested. Generally, if there's a lot of kills, by a single corporation it'll tell you who owns or lives in this space which if it's a large party you know to run immediately uh, the next and last thing on the board it'll show you the z kill board the most recent kill and it's accurate and then you can click the kill board and uh, follow up and see what times the people are active so looking at eve pasta you know this system has a low sex static and a c2 well you just came in through a C2, so you could possibly be coming through the static. That means this worm only has one more connection, potentially, which would be low sec. So the next step you're going to do is check the kill board. Uh, and in this case, you can look at the times, and it's all based on EVE time to see when people are active. So in this case, you see me, I killed a, a bunch of players. Uh, and this was during the time I had all the open holes in my home there. And I really couldn't do much, so I just camped the data sites. And you can see that time is pretty consistent. Uh, my schedule uh, rotates often, so mine's a really a bad example. But most times you'll see consistency. And that'll determine whether uh, they are active during the time that you're there. You know, go, I usually go back a couple weeks just to take a, a big look. And uh, you'll, you'll see that there's a pattern of consistency. And if... Generally, after a couple hours of their activity, if, if you know I'm free and clear of that, I'll go ahead and farm the content in there after I scan all the signatures, and you have to do that. That's what makes this a little bit hard, but it's just something you must do. Before you farm a wormhole, you have to scan every single signature and identify every signature. And the reason is, you have to see if there's any more wormholes connected. Plus, it's always nice if you see like a uh, covert ops on D scan, you know where they're going now because you have the bookmarks for those data sites. Also, some of the data data and relic sites spawn rats, and uh, they're they're quite juicy. Uh, that a lot of the sites aren't worth running as far as hacking is concerned, but the sites themselves are actually pretty good. And I usually like to open with that. When I go in, I like to do one of those first because now mobile depots down, drones are out, um, causing. A stir in the force <laughs> so if anyone's active they'll notice and if they if I go right to anomaly they can warp to me but if like a neutral party had just got in there while I was doing my research they're gonna have to scan it down and I'll see the probes and I'll know this is not a good time so I like to usually open with that so the beginning of the video you saw me in a Tengu doing some sites and this is exactly how things were laid out when I went in there so I was home in this case could be anything for you. It could be null, low sec, high sec. Uh, in my case, it was a C2. So I jump into this hole and it has C2 content that I want. Now there's no parties that live in this particular wormhole, but that's quite rare. There's usually always some occupant. Um, in this case, there wasn't. So I didn't really have any trouble there. Uh, connect, after scanning down all the signatures, I noticed there was a C6 connection that was a random roll in to it. It was a small uh, frig hole, so if I'm using a Tengu, it, it can destroy my setup, can do good damage on frigates. I'm not really concerned about it. Uh, I scouted it, looked it up, wasn't very active. 
Uh, then there was another C5 roll-in on this, same deal. Um, in fact, that one actually was dead. There was no activity for months. Uh, so I wasn't really too concerned there either because it was also a small. Uh, then it had a C2 static, uh, which had a, a sizable corp next door. Uh, the thing was, on their kill board, I could tell that they are asleep during this time, so they weren't really a concern. So what I had done, I scanned everything down, and I went in there, did my relic or data site, didn't see any activity, and I set up a scout alt on the C2 asleep box there. And I did that just because there was an off chance th that was my largest threat, was that connection. Well, things were going good. Uh, I was running sites for about an hour, and then a random roll-in happened. Exit strategy uh, alliance actually were rolling their holes, and it landed into this system. And uh, I was watching signatures saw it, and I reacted. This is the part where you should cloak and wait to see what's coming. But the problem is, I had done a bunch of sites. There's wrecks everywhere, so whoever comes in is going to know that... Uh, I'm there, but no one's jumped through the hole yet. So I was like, okay, maybe I can switch to my alt, salvage these things real quick. So if anyone that comes in here, won't, will see nothing and think it's empty and dead. Well, that didn't happen. And you know, scam bros came out. So I warped my characters to my home system. I switched to cloaky ships and I cloaked everything up. So if they came into my home system, which they did, they found a wormhole with no wrecks and no activity and no one on D-scan. Minute moments later, they left back to the C2 content wormhole. And then I watched them closed and roll that hole that they just came in on. However, at this point, the C2 asleep guys will be on in about an hour and a half. And there's a possibility that the people that closed the hole still have ships in the C2 content. So I decided, eh. I'll, uh, I'll close the hole. That's just the way it works sometimes. Um, to be honest and perfectly frank with you, I play at weird off peak hours, which gives me a hell of an advantage. And even with that, it'll take me like 30 or 40 hole roll ins, you know, eight minutes a piece, to find a C2 that I'm comfortable with, that the time spread is just right. For me to go out there and do it that you now there's so even the ones that aren't occupied have so many random wormholes connections in it makes those difficult to do as well so if you find one with like 30 sites you think jackpot no not not exactly um you just have to do the proper research and you know you soon discover well, this this is not a good place to run these and that's why there's so many <laughs> Uh, but on the rare chances things do work out um, my last trip I roll into a wormhole and uh, it was similar to like the one I that like of this layout and there was actually one POS and all it had was a POS bubble nothing else and a guy probably set it up because this wormhole has a ton of sights in it and he's probably just gonna farm everything and he was basing out of that quick setup a small POS well, I went in there and I scanned everything down and I did all the combat sites, every signature. I did it, every data, even the gas sites. Like I have three minor alts, so one, like three were in, they were in all three, like three at once at a time doing the gas sites while I'm doing the combat. <laughs> and then I did all the data at the end. So when this man logged in the next day, he was probably like, what happened? Because it went to like 35 things to zero. I mean, when I left, the only thing left was an or anomaly. <laughs> but you know, you have to, when you get that opportunity, you have to take every last bit of resource out of it because it's extremely hard to find something safe, especially in small numbers. And uh, this is very difficult to do. Uh, the C2 is great because if you have players that are new, have low skill points, it's excellent. It's, it's better money than anything doing missions and uh, even better than NullSec ratting. Because in a battle cruiser, you can do all these sites and at least net 80 mil an hour and gain a lot of experience. 
Uh, in my case, because I have access to better equipment and skills, a C3 would have really went the distance because, you know, all those consecutive days that you can't play, making up for it with a, a higher payout would be much greater. One uh, huge plus is if you're a small group of people that love PvP, this is in small scale and even solo, man, this is an excellent endeavor to get involved with. And I'll, I'll tell you what happened, especially if you play uh, right after downtime. Uh, a lot of people uh, I've caught, like you saw me f barbecue that caracal with, <laughs> with that Balgorn. <laughs> Well, there was a story behind that. What had happened was uh, I logged in, and those guys were in my wormhole farming my content that I left there for that purpose. So I watched them for a little while, and it only took me 15 minutes to find out where they came from. And so I warped there, and I scanned it down with it out of range because they were I waited until they were all on the other side of the system. And I went in and scouted them out, did my research, so I knew what I was dealing with. So there's a Drake, a Gnosis, and a Caracol in my system. So then I jumped into Balgorn and I worked into their wormhole and I positioned myself right there. So whoever jumps in is gonna get barbecued. I then took my alt back into my wormhole and tossed out combat probes as like a hunting dog to bring up the grouse or something from the weeds and it worked that caracal came through and I barbecued that thing I was like yeah well as soon as I barbecued that the drake j jumped in I'm thinking alrighty then well he warped away and then the gnosis jumped through and he warped away as well it's been quite a while since I've done this I didn't realize just how terrible the battleship lock time was but they were both able to align and warp out that was pretty frustrating. Then after downtime, I uh, I warped to my C2 static and opened it. And when I came through the other side, I saw a Megatron on D-scan and then probes out. So I knew it was a guy solo roaming a wormhole and I can barbecue that thing no problem. So I waited uh, about 15 minutes and he came through with a scout ult. I'm all cloaked up, you know, he was surveying, okay. This must be one of the new connections that spawned during downtime. So he jumps the Mega in and he jumps it out. At this point, I know it's going to be three minutes before he can jump back in. So there I am with the Balgorn, ready to say hello. That damn thing warped off with 0.5 seconds left. And same thing on the other side of the wormhole. I couldn't catch him due to the lock times. So my skill is at five. It's just the bad lock times that I have no sensor booster. Well, now that I've lost uh, four kills, I was so frustrated. I took one of my mining ults and trained remote sensor boosting, which I highly recommend. I, I picked the battleship because the profile engagement I get with it is huge, you know, since I'm a solo guy. I, and I thought that would be best, but it turned out to be a bad choice. If I used like a Myrmidon, I could have caught them all, which was frustrating. But uh, if you do the battleship route, you want remote sensor boosting, but the whole point of this is, you know, just me as a solo guy, I had the opportunity for some nice kills there, although I failed miserably. Uh, that's a lot of potential and a lot of fun. Unfortunately, uh, it didn't happen often enough to pique my interest to stay, but the content is there and can be had. But it's all based on if you could play after downtime because people just think that it's, you know, what was generated. Uh, that popped up during downtime but there are other times where people will log in and see it there and think that that just generated throughout the day and uh, you know if you happen to be cloaked and they come through to scout it you might be able to catch somebody so it's just something to consider at the very least if you do PI and PvP you know have an old in there at the ready you might be able to catch somebody and have a good time well I hope this this is a very long video I think this is the longest one I've done uh, it took me a couple weeks to make this. Uh, I tried to condense as much as I could down into this video to give the person uh, the best idea moving forward if they want to do a nomadic life in a wormhole, uh, what to expect, and things like that. Uh, just to cover this briefly, I did a POS large, uh, fully Death Starred out 
with uh, a corp hangar array, a compression array, and a ship maintenance array. And uh, I would just online what I needed and kept everything. I had four jammers of each type, like six neutralizers, tons of guns. So to make it as painful as possible to uh, destroy me. I left the tower there and I named it uh, my name and YouTube after it. So hopefully those that have visited this hall will see this story and, and this whole deal. I thought it'd be kind of a neat thing to leave in there. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, with that said, um, I hope this was handy for you. I put a lot of time in this, and I, I hope it saves you and, and uh, works out well for you. This is definitely something that if you have a handful of guys, it would be much easier. But if you want to do this solo, you're going to need a hell of a lot of time on your hands. So that's just a, a word of caution. But if you have a group of buddies, this is definitely something you should consider. Uh, it's a lot of fun. All right, guys. You have a good evening.